You're listening to Head South Radio with your host, Kat Meyer, a podcast dedicated to prioritizing pleasure and removing the stigma and shame around sex. We're here to be curious and have an open conversation about sexual health and relational wellness. This podcast is intended for educational and entertainment purposes. The information discussed is not a substitute for professional medical advice. You can close your eyes and the grounding rootedness of your sit bones. Find some integrity with the spine and grow a little bit taller through the crown of the head. Start to notice your breath. Observing the quality of your breath and setting an intention that our shared experience, our communication can serve others as a source of information or insight. And when you're ready, start to blink your eyes open, taking in the room, taking in the light, taking in the screen. Hi, my friend. (laughs) Good morning. Good afternoon. Hello. Wait, yeah, it's still morning here. It's eleven eleven uh, <laughs> for me. Make a, make, make a wish. Make a wish, everybody. <laughs> so I just wanted to start this episode by saying that this episode specifically contains very adult related content. And so just being mindful of who's listening and this is not intended for younger audiences. Um, We are going to talk about rope bondage and a workshop that we had done in October. With that being said, we are not the experts. We're just here to communicate and talk about our experience, our personal experience. And we will be in the future talking to guests on this podcast who specifically do kink education around shibari, rope tying, and all BDSM based work. But this conversation is strictly about you and I as noobs <laughs> going to a workshop in our experience. And so I wanted to introduce Tommy. And so would you give us a little bit about yourself and where you are, who you are, and then we'll jump into the conversation about our workshop that we had participated in. Yeah. So my name is Tommy. My pronouns are they, them. I am based here in sunny, sunny Los Angeles. Um, I am a yoga teacher, movement instructor, stretch specialist, and Taurus. <laughs> if it's important. It's very um, important. <laughs> and I like to focus a lot of times on um, restorative work, reparative work, rest, and relaxation when it comes to a yoga practice. And otherwise, just a curious, curious person. Yep. <laughs> Yeah. That all checks out. <laughs> Rising cancer. Facts. Rising cancer. Very important. Very important. And th- those are all true facts about you. Um, <laughs> so you asked me to join you on this workshop. Mm-hmm. And it was a workshop held in Brooklyn by Liv of mm-hmm. Freaks Not Creeps. Mm-hmm. And they host that in their space. It's a very small, intimate group. And so what drew you to this kink bondage workshop? And how did you find it, so I found out about Liv and this workshop on Instagram. I think over the past couple of years, though I've had, as we all have, a complicated, at times toxic relationship with social media, it has been very helpful in the past few years to find and discover certain artists or people in certain communities, in this sense, in the kind of rope bondage and shibari community. A mutual friend of ours had a few years ago kind of gotten into the practice of shibari and nodding and that work. And so hearing her speak about it just led me to the internet and finding more and more Instagram accounts, which of course you find one and then all of a sudden it's like (laughs) all that pops up because algorithms are real. Mm -hmm. Um, And yeah, so this one just popped up over time. I'm sure I followed them for a very long time. I was in New York earlier in the previous year and they were having a workshop and I wasn't able to make it just those dates. And so the next time I was there and we were both in town at the same time, I signed up for the workshop and I immediately 
reserved two spaces regardless. And Kat, you were kind of the first person I thought of because of the work you're doing with Heads Health, but also just our shared interests. And I could tell by a lot of the language and just the posting around this person that it was a particularly safe space. It was very educational and what seems like just a great tip of the iceberg, learn a little bit and you just actually learn how much you you have to learn, how much knowledge <laughs> there is out there that you don't yet know. Um, yeah. yeah, recognizing your ignorance. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so then had you ever done any rope tying prior to this workshop? Because I did not. I mean, I, I mean, I could say that someone had tied me up at some point early yeah. in my life. Like yeah. never, not the artistry has no. been my experience. And this is definitely, there's an artistry and um, yeah. a level of, like you said, education and respect within this yeah. practice. No, I have no, no experience in the, in that department, other than of course, you know, like wrapping ourselves up with blankets or like swaddling ourselves when it comes to <laughs> containers and restraint and boundaries and bondage. I was kind of going into it blindly. And I also liked that going into what I saw very clearly in this space was educational and there weren't there weren't other optics at play there weren't other intentions or interests it was just you want to learn how to do this a little bit <laughs> do you want to mm-hmm. learn how to tie a knot yeah so no I went into it completely blind and that's another reason I kind of asked you because I have since met other people who you know, have more experience in this realm, but I thought it would be interesting for both of us just so bright eyed, bushy tailed, go in and be like, we're here and uh, take it away. <laughs> and so, yeah, what were your feelings and expectations going in? Because for me, I had this very open curiosity. It's been something similar to you that's mm-hmm. been on my radar of like something I would like to explore for my own personal experience. And then more so as we've moved into this realm of head south of like, oh yeah, I want, I want to explore this more so. But did you have any feelings or expectations going in? I really went into the workshop super open, open-minded. open um, It helped that, you know, we were going together. So I didn't feel so much insecurity around, you know, like who's going to be there? Will I be judged? What's going on? That camaraderie helped mm-hmm. definitely in attending together. But it was kind of hard to have expectations because I truly did not know what I was going to walk in. I didn't know if we were going to all practice tying each other up in a lot of different ways. If we were, if it was just going to be a lecture, we were just going to hear about, I don't know, the history of Shabar. <laughs> I mean, truly in a sense, I didn't know if we were going to be like suspended, which I know is very advanced. So I didn't think that would be the case, but I walked in just so like, well, we'll see yeah. and the the tone of the the space is something a bit more discreet it's not you know like you're walking up to your local yoga studio and they're like we're doing a bondage <laughs> workshop come on in everybody it's very you know like a quiet space and introspective space so mm-hmm. yeah yeah i would agree that going together helped with my social anxiety like i get social anxiety going to a regular yoga class sometimes so Going to this together, we walked together. That was also very helpful and kind of just talked about it, like caught up on our lives because we're now on different coasts. But that was very helpful in Mm -hmm. overcoming some nervousness or anxiety around it and just kind of the camaraderie, both of us not knowing what was going on. felt really good, actually, and very grounding. And exactly that when we walked into that space, I had no idea what we were walking into. And the space that Liv has created was very safe calming, non-intimidating at all. No. And I loved that. I feel like that's something important to talk about is the the lack of intimidation because I think the idea of seeing a post that says kink bondage workshop can be very scary for a lot of people. And that's why I wanted you and I to talk about this because I found it so not intimidating at all. And I, I love that there was a balance between the theoretical and the mm-hmm. history, a little bit of the history and the respect for the art and how to treat the ropes, all of those little details that they brought to the, to the workshop, but also then the practical yeah. and feeling safe and not feeling like everyone's so immersed in it. Like, and we'll get to that of like what the actual experience is like learning that you're so in that, that you don't even notice the people in the room at all. Yeah. 
and that feels safe as well. So you don't feel exposed or vulnerable in a way because you are going into vulnerable positions and doing these things. And, and some people were there solo and mm-hmm. paired up and working together. And so that, I think that's really incredible that that space was so such a safe container and it yeah. probably needs to be that way. Yeah. And yeah. so what would, how would you describe getting in there and like what our experience was like in, in the process and learning? Cause you brought your own rope. <laughs> so yeah. You came prepared, of course. <laughs> yeah. Um, a friend, I don't know, years ago gifted me just a small rope and I, I've never done anything with it. I've just like had it in a box. And so I was like, great, finally putting this to use, but it was interesting. And I won't project on your experience, but I think for us, because we come from the practice of educating and teaching, we are yoga teachers. We have spent so much time, both professionally and personally, talking to people about how to do something and why to do it. And so I think we had a certain perspective in the room that was not just student, but also listening to the ways we were being instructed. I think we're also trained into reading a room. And so mm-hmm. we were not the the type that will just sit there and listen to teacher. It's like, we're also looking at, you know, the other students in the room without judgment, but just, you know, what's going on? where's the focus, what's happening. Um, And then when we got into the kind of practical work of learning how to weave and braid and knot and get into it, I think it was a little bit more second nature to us because, again, we have this practice of instructing people how to do something technical. And so Mm -hmm. when... Liv was getting into, you know, this rope goes over this one and these go under and then you add tension here. It was kind of more quick for us to adopt that and be like, oh, okay, we just do this. Cool. Mm -hmm. Similarly, if someone were showing us, you know, how to knit or crochet, I think we have just a practice of listening in that sense. And it was fascinating to me to kind of look around the room and see where people were either getting caught up or challenged in just the the recipe of techniques Mm -hmm. or otherwise where people were quick to you know quick or eager to you know like oh I want to be the one that's roped up or I want to be the one that's tying and like I want to I like really want to get this and yeah it was quick also when the I because it was I believe a two-hour workshop and when it finished I think everyone in the room was like Wait, what? Yeah. What Mm -hmm. happened? But But I'm not like tied up in a cocoon from the ceiling yet, like a butterfly. (laughs) Um, How did it feel for you when you, when I tied you up? I mean, we weren't doing anything boldly advanced. It was, it was clearly a beginner workshop and a beginner space. And so for clarity, those listening we were learning a few of the most like simple and rudimentary knots and then how to kind of like build upon those. Mm -hmm. And so when either of us were being tied up, it was like we were being tied up between our like knees and our ankles or like our forearms uh, between our wrists and our elbows. So Mm -hmm. we weren't also in any, you know, compromising positions um, or poses that would become uncomfortable over time so it felt great I mean it just (laughs) feels um it feels so much like you're in just like a much smaller and much more specific hammock Um, like if you think of those kind of rope Mm -hmm. hammocks that Mm -hmm. you are suspended in and then you are just kind of like cocooned it feels very comforting to be in a kind of container where you can actually feel your body let go really release but you're just you're just held and it's not unknown. Like being held feels great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I could relate it. I, when we were doing it, I related it to restorative practice. And when we're using straps and bolst- uh, bolsters to support somebody, that's the same experience I was having both when you were tying me up. And then also when I was tying you up, I found it to be meditative and relaxing and yeah. calming to be both, to be 
both the tire and the receiver. Yeah, that's one thing I definitely was not expecting and was so surprised to experience was the yeah. exactly that surrender, the release, um, mm-hmm. the feeling of safety and that mm-hmm. container where then you could be vulnerable and you could see, I, I remember there was a few people in the room that working with Liv, they, they advanced a little bit more and like tied the rope around their mouth or like did stuff behind the back. We didn't go that far in it. We kept, I mean, both of us were kind of a little bit <laughs> perfectionist and like, I want to get this part. <laughs> yeah, this must be perfect. <laughs> this must be perfect before I move on to the next level. But I had witnessed some people around the room also moving forward in um, more, I would say, more advanced ways. Yeah. And I thought that was really interesting because I love that we work from a place of like, oh, this is very calming. And it also just felt very familiar. Like I, I have been knitting for a few years. It felt that same rhythmic pattern. I loved both being tied up and tying you up. It felt really. Yeah. To your point there, I think what was really special in a space like that is, you know, currency of the space was just curiosity. Everyone was (laughs) kind of playing with such a different level of curiosity that they were kind of either trying to progress as quickly as they could or just really hone in and focus. And then I think Liv did a great job of balancing, kind of Mm -hmm. like containing that quite literally so that everyone was kind of accommodated in that way. Mm -hmm. I appreciated how unintimidating it was. Yeah. Yeah. Like it wasn't scary. I mean, I, I think prior to this, and if I wasn't going with you, I probably would have been very nervous and scared or unsure of like yeah. what. And I think with that, you know, it it's starting to come out more and more and kink isn't as um, like stigmatized. And so yeah. what I loved about this is that this was very approachable, very accessible and mm-hmm. not scary at all and felt really great. And so then moving Beyond that, have you taken this, these new skills out into the world? Have you used rope or would you use it or will you be continuing? I absolutely would use it and I absolutely would love to continue learning, but I have not yet, (laughs) which I mean, I think is a a typical experience. You know, someone learns something new and it's like, great, I'm going to just sit, sit that right there for a second and I'll come back to it. Yeah, I think part of the compartmentalizing is, you know, I did this workshop while I was traveling. So in some way, it's still just kind of like in, not in, in my, my home. Yeah, it's in that pocket. <laughs> so, but no, I'm, I my curiosity still exists. I'm still interested. I still am following however many like Shibari accounts on <laughs> Instagram. So it's like popping up all the time. But no, I haven't yet indulged in more learning there. I have to say, I have continued to do it, done it on myself and shown other people. (laughs) And I really enjoy showing other people Mm -hmm. how to do it. And what we've learned, just the basics of like, this is what it Mm -hmm. looks like tying myself up and showing some people and both in an intimate and just casual (laughs) way. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Just because it's fun and just sharing that. And it, it just feels exactly like how I would, do a quick restorative pose with somebody yeah the exact same and the people I've shown have also felt very relaxed and safe and Mm -hmm. comfortable and people I've tied up or I've shown them how to tie me up you know so much so that someone once took a nap when I did it yeah they literally oh my gosh they're like the relaxation was just like and that was pretty incredible and so I think that's the other thing I think the connotation of kink or especially rope tying can seem maybe like we use the word intimidating, but also maybe a bit violent or like it stems from torture or like that's the visuals and it yeah. doesn't actually, the experience of it. I mean, I likened it to skydiving yesterday because when I went skydiving, that harness thing to somebody else. So skydiving was the most relaxing experience I've ever had in my life. Like the most wow. surrendered, released experience, most meditative thing I've ever had happen wow. to me started like in the plane, strapping myself to the dude behind me <laughs> and yeah. feeling like, okay, like now I'm just releasing myself to this person and this is it. Like I have no choice. I'm going to fall out of this yeah. plane. There's nothing I can do. And so that experience was so surrendering, so bizarrely safe 
and yeah. um, liberating. And I had the same experience with the rope tying. There is such a weird interesting liberation with bondage and liberation from a boundary and yeah. a container and that you can then feel like fully expressed. Like I could fill out this space and I can like release and feel safe with this person. And I'm entrusting my life, my energy, all of these things in this other person that's with skydiving, yeah. but in all of these practices where you're uh, working with a partner in any realm, friendship, mm-hmm. you know, intimate relationship. What I loved about that was the, the trust and the the release. And so I'm curious about how you yeah. felt about that. I mean, it is, it just makes me think, you know, our practice with restorative yoga is really the practice of, you know, getting out of your own way and getting out mm-hmm. of your body's way because more than anything else, all our bodies want to do is just heal. Like if, if our bodies were just let to exist, they would just, they would just live and they would just heal themselves. No, we're not like mm-hmm. lizards and going to like regrow our tails, but you know, in a restorative yoga practice, the point is to, set up and structure and bound yourself in a way that removes any effort from your being. So you're not holding yourself up against gravity. You're not lifting your head. You're not balancing. You're not, you know, standing on your head. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's you're contained in a way that your body can truly release so that once out of your own way in that sense, everything else just starts to work naturally as it should and as it patterns. So, you know, your nervous system regulates, your heartbeat kind of softens and slows down. Ideally, your digestion starts to just move along. Function. Function. Function, fun- function <laughs> yeah. at all. Um, mm-hmm. The biochemistry of all of our glands and hormones just starts to, you know, balance out. Uh, Mm -hmm. So yeah, this container, this like structure we're put in, this experience of being held, I think what you just said, like bondage as liberation Mm -hmm. is so, it's so pertinent. Yeah. So would you recommend to people in your life to do the workshop? Yes and no. I think what is really special about the space and specifically the space that you know Liv has created and the workshop we went to is that all participants, um, including Liv, including, you know, she kind of had a bit of an assistant like person in the room, someone supporting mm-hmm. them. There was a shared open-mindedness. Everyone was mm-hmm. interested and was pursuing this interest regardless of inhibition, insecurity, anxiety, nerves. And, you know, some people helped themselves out in different ways. You know, we went together, a few other like couplings of people went together as friends. I commend those people that went solo and were like, no, I'm just gonna, I've never done this. I'm just gonna see because I was tied up once or whatever. And so what I encourage, you know, someone who has a really pure curiosity about this and an interest to learn about it from a perspective that doesn't have you know, specific intention. Mm -hmm. Because I think I want to speak for everyone that was in the space when I say like, no one, no one showed up because they were like, I want to tie someone up tomorrow. Right. You know, like it was very like, I don't know, I've seen all this. I've heard things about this. I want to, I want to know more. So I, I, I think yes to people that have a curiosity about it. And I have an apprehension to encourage people to go that, still have judgment around kink bdsm that kind of Mm -hmm. work and especially that kind of art to explore that first i don't know as as simple as you know what there's there's this kind of work shows up in a million different ways on the internet Mm -hmm. and so i think maybe first practice in that kind of curious space and maybe even individually And when I say it shows up in a million different ways, just thinking about all the different Instagram accounts, there are artists who work with rope, work with bondage, that you see their work actually like tying other people up and you see the like Mm -hmm. intricacy of that art. There are also, you know, embroidery artists who their art is, you know, depicting the 
the practice in mm-hmm. in that medium there's just so many different ways to kind of like peak interest and Explore. curiosity about it yeah because i think it takes a lot of self-inquiry and reflection to go into that space without without judgment just trusting you know everyone's open-mindedness does that make sense right. absolutely i think with yeah. that having an inf- informed idea of what this practice is and not just like oh this is a workshop i'm going to do on the weekend like it's more of a respect for the artistry to Mm -hmm. explore and understand what you're getting into that would be like you know someone trying metaphorically like trying to climb a mountain without like looking at the trails and like understanding where great example right like so not just diving into it and then expecting to be like i'm going to get to the top like i like I, I love that you're saying like we didn't have expectations of like achieving anything from this at all mm-hmm. other than just experiencing and receiving whatever live offered in that space. Yeah. And I think that then makes it safe for everybody participating. But I think if you come in and you want something, there's yeah. like the currency exchange shifts the energy for yeah. everyone. In- because even if you're not participating and working with other people, it's such an intimate experience. It's the vulnerability is still there, even though it's still, it's safe. I think having that level of ignorance, but also that level of um, expectation, (laughs) it's the combination that I would say, like slow your roll and kind of absorb it in other ways. That's how I understand what you're saying. And I agree with you fully is like absorb and experience it in other modalities so that when you come into it, you don't have, either of those like you're very open and you're not judging but you're also not expecting and having an agenda of like what you want to receive in this because it's and I I would imagine like ours was just that two-hour experience I would imagine that every time we post these it's a very different you know the formality the technical experiences one thing but then the people in the room bring bring the experience yeah i mean in our practice we can teach the same poses postures we teach the same yoga class a hundred times but it's you know depends who's in the room Mm -hmm. going back to kind of intention and expectation i think yes i spoke to you know going into this workshop really just like i don't know (laughs) we will see Mm -hmm. to the point of coming in with a real just curiosity and a, a respect for the art of it all. I mm-hmm. it did cross my mind. You know, is is there going to be any tone of this experience, or is there going to be anyone in the room who's you know expecting sex or something mm-hmm. erotic from this? Because mm-hmm. you know that's the world that this practice lives in. That case was no, absolutely not. Right, but. Yeah, just and there are workshops like that. That that yes. is exactly that. that's how some of this is presented or um, mm-hmm. contained is within that actual intimate sex erotica mm-hmm. experience. But this was definitely like I wore the same clothes that I would wear, <laughs> to like yeah. the most comfortable, and yeah. nothing was removed, like nothing was yeah. exposed. And yeah, there was it, there was also such a dialogue and communication of consent around touch within the the space that I thought was so so fostered Mm -hmm. yeah so I I am so grateful that you asked me to go with you and me too (laughs) I look forward to I look forward to taking the level two I know and hoping that our you know stars align and that we can do it together Um, Same. same but yes I think if you are curious and open and have been similar to Tommy and I exploring this or interested and have a a deep awareness of what this world looks like i would recommend checking out freaks not creeps which is liv's account and you can dm them and kind of get more information but there's also plenty of other resources and information and this might not be the right workshop for everybody and there's plenty of other educators out there that are offering something that you might be looking for that's just it's a big world. It's a big, big world. And as you said, it just keeps coming. Like once you look, <laughs> it all starts flooding in. So yeah. be prepared. But thank you. I thank enjoyed you. our little chat this morning. Brightened up Likewise. my weekend. Likewise. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> and uh, yeah, I think that's it. That's a wrap. Special thanks to all of our guests. Head South is hosted by Kat Meyer, produced by Isis Barlow, edited by Megan Hook, with music by Lily Rezzy Rothman, graphics by Ella Chodos Irvine, cover art by Gina Ship Casey, and intro by Murph Meyer. If you're looking for me.